This is a listening test for the Ukrainian Independent External Evaluation. There are three tasks for the test. For each task of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. At the start of each piece, you will hear this sound. You will have time at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. Remember, you must not speak during the test. And while you are listening, you can write your answers on the question paper of the testing notebook. Now, open your testing notebooks and look at task 1, questions 1 to 6. You will listen to six recordings. There are six questions in this task. For each question, choose the correct answer, A, B, or C. Now look at the three pictures for question one. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Wow, that's a nice watch. Where did you get it? I bought it on television. I was watching one of those home shopping programs and saw this watch. Why this one? I had been looking for a bracelet watch with a square face and three hands. It was the same watch I saw at the jewelry store for $40 more. Oh, really? Yes, they sent it in the mail and charged me extra but the watch still cost less money than if I had bought it in this store. Now listen again. Wow, that's a nice watch. Where did you get it? I bought it on television. I was watching one of those home shopping programs and saw this watch. Why this one? I had been looking for a bracelet watch with a square face and three hands. It was the same watch I saw at the jewelry store for $40 more. Oh, really? Yes, they sent it in the mail and charged me extra, but the watch still cost less money than if I had bought it in this store. Now look at the three pictures for question two. How may I help you? I want to return this book. Is that all you need? I also want to take this magazine to read at home. You're not allowed to do that. Why not? It's just a policy of ours. So what can I borrow? Only books or videos. I want to take this magazine with me. You will have to read it in the library. Now listen again. How may I help you? I want to return this book. Is that all you need? I also want to take this magazine to read at home. You're not allowed to do that. Why not? It's just a policy of ours. So what can I borrow? Only books or videos. I want to take this magazine with me. You will have to read it in the library. Now look at the three pictures for question three. Good afternoon. My name is John and I'm your waiter. Can I help you? Can I have a menu, please? Here you are. Would you like to know today's specials? Certainly. Well, our today's starter is fish soup and today's main course is salmon and chips. All right. I'd like the salmon and chips. Would you like to have the starter soup? Actually, I would like to have something light to start with. Why don't you try our fresh green salad? It is very popular with our customers. Okay. Here is your food. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you.
Now listen again. Good afternoon. My name is John, and I'm your waiter. Can I help you? Can I have a menu, please? Here you are. Would you like to know today's specials? Certainly. Well, our today's starter is fish soup, and today's main course is salmon and chips. All right. I'd like the salmon and chips. Would you like to have the starter soup? Actually, I would like to have something light to start with. Why don't you try our fresh green salad? It is very popular with our customers. Okay. Here is your food. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you. Now you have ten seconds to look at question four. The purpose of school is to equip us for success, but success is measured by more than just test results. A person's ambitions and creativity play a much more important part in personal achievement than just knowing facts. After taking a test, students often forget what they've learned. I have first-hand experience of this. The only reason high school students learn is often to pass. As soon as we step out of the classroom. We dump the information to create space for new knowledge. Even those who study hard just cannot store so much factual information in their heads. Now listen again. The purpose of school is to equip us for success, but success is measured by more than just test results. A person's ambitions and creativity play a much more important part in personal achievement than just knowing facts. After taking a test, students often forget what they've learned. I have first-hand experience of this. The only reason high school students learn is often to pass. As soon as we step out of the classroom, we dump the information to create space for new knowledge. Even those who study hard just cannot store so much factual information in their heads. Now you have ten seconds to look at question five. There are people known for their style, but how do they dress their children? A top interior designer and two teenage daughters. How much say do you have over what your daughters wear? Tara has an allowance, so she can buy stuff without me. Though I buy her the more expensive things, such as boots and coats. They have less eccentric things than I do. They both like American apparel. It's the first shop I've been into as a mother that I didn't understand. I thought, what is all this? It's just grey sweatshirts. Do you let them wear makeup? Yes. Because I've never seen them wearing inappropriate amounts, the age where you feel a bit sensitive about that is about twelve. But by the time they're sixteen, they can pretty much do what they want. Now listen again. There are people known for their style, but how do they dress their children? A top interior designer. And two teenage daughters. How much say do you have over what your daughters wear? Tara has an allowance, so she can buy stuff without me. Though I buy her the more expensive things, such as boots and coats. They have less eccentric things than I do. They both like American apparel. It's the first shop I've been into as a mother that I didn't understand. I thought, what is all this? It's just grey sweatshirts. Do you let them wear makeup? Yes, because I've never seen them wearing inappropriate amounts. The age where you feel a bit sensitive about that is about twelve, but by the time they're sixteen, they can pretty much do what they want.
Now you have 10 seconds to look at question 6. I'm checking out in about half an hour. That won't be a problem, sir. The day in New York has hardly begun. I think I'll visit a few more tourist spots. Sir, are you going to take the luggage with you around the city? Oh, yes. I need some place to secure my bags. Is there luggage storage at the railway station? They definitely have. But, sir, we do have a storage space for your bags. It's only $5 an hour. That's the solution. Now listen again. I'm checking out in about half an hour. That won't be a problem, sir. The day in New York has hardly begun. I think I'll visit a few more tourist spots. Sir, are you going to take the luggage with you around the city? Oh, yes. I need some place to secure my bags. Is there luggage storage at the railway station? They definitely have. But, sir, we do have a storage space for your bags. It's only $5 an hour. That's the solution. This is the end of task 1. Now turn to task 2, questions 7 to 11. Look at the five statements for this task. You will listen to a story. Decide if each statement is true or false. For statement 7 to 11, choose T if the statement is true according to the text, and F if it is false. Now you will have 20 seconds to look at the questions for task 2. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. An au pair is a young adult who travels to a foreign country to live with a host family. Au pairing can involve any number of duties. The job is often very difficult. Try not to be unrealistic and never think that you are on holiday. You are abroad to work. Your main duties will be caring for children. But most families will expect you not only to keep their children's rooms tidy, but also to do some light housework, like dusting, vacuuming, and washing the dishes. It would be natural to take care of the children's clothes, though you should not be expected to do any hand washing. In addition, you will be expected to prepare the children's meals, you might even be told to cook for the adult members of the household sometimes, so be honest about how good you are at cooking. The amount of shopping you do depends on the family. Some will expect you just to pick up a few items at the local grocery store, while others will make you responsible for the whole food budget. Some families in Europe prefer foreign au pairs so that they can help the children with another language. It may be a case of giving a scheduled lesson once a day or simply chatting to them in your language or reading them stories. Au pairs must be given at least two free days a week. It is important that the free time should really be free, that the girl can meet her friends and go sightseeing or to concerts, cinemas, etc. Many au pairs leave families if they feel they are being overloaded with work, so it is in the interest of the family to work out the au pair schedule in the form of a written work plan in order to make the best use of her time. Now listen again. 
An au pair is a young adult who travels to a foreign country to live with a host family. Au pairing can involve any number of duties. The job is often very difficult. Try not to be unrealistic and never think that you are on holiday. You are abroad to work. Your main duties will be caring for children. But most families will expect you not only to keep their children's rooms tidy, but also to do some light housework, like dusting, vacuuming, and washing the dishes. It would be natural to take care of the children's clothes, though you should not be expected to do any hand washing. In addition, you will be expected to prepare the children's meals. You might even be told to cook for the adult members of the household sometimes, so be honest about how good you are at cooking. The amount of shopping you do depends on the family. Some will expect you just to pick up a few items at the local grocery store, while others will make you responsible for the whole food budget. Some families in Europe prefer foreign au pairs so that they can help the children with another language. It may be a case of giving a scheduled lesson once a day or simply chatting to them in your language or reading them stories. Au pairs must be given at least two free days a week. It is important that the free time should really be free, that the girl can meet her friends and go sightseeing or to concerts, cinemas, etc. Many au pairs leave families if they feel they are being overloaded with work, so it is in the interest of the family to work out the au pair schedule in the form of a written work plan in order to make the best use of her time. This is the end of task two. Now turn to task 3, questions 12 to 16. You will listen to an interview. For questions 12 to 16, choose the correct answer, A, B, or C. Now you have 45 seconds to look at the questions for task 3. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. It's easy to be jealous of Taylor Swift. She seems to have it all, and even more. Her four albums have earned her $125 million. But beneath her success lies a life far from perfection. Today, our guest in the studio is Samantha Clarks, whose book about Taylor Swift will help us get inside the mind of the young superstar. Hi, Samantha. It's a pleasure to see you here. Hi, David. Thanks for inviting me. You write in your book that Taylor had an awkward childhood. Why is that? Taylor grew up on a Christmas tree farm in Pennsylvania. As a child, her favorite hobby was to ride horses, and she was encouraged to participate in many horse shows. She loved country music, which nobody else did. At the age of 12, she was taught three chords by a computer repairman on a guitar. With those three simple chords, she wrote her first song. She was lonely at school. In fact, she felt rejected. No one ever invited her to their parties. Taylor wrote it all down in her first song, Lucky You. How did Taylor progress in music? 
Later, Taylor got a new interest, which would make her one of the recognizable people of her generation. She fancied musical theater, for which she went to Broadway for vocal and acting lessons. She started performing country music at fairs, local music festivals, sporting events, and coffee houses. By then, Swift was sure that she would have her future in music. I know that Taylor's family moved to Nashville when she was 14. Did that change her life in music? Yes, definitely. In search of a break, she was taken by her mother to Nashville, Tennessee. In Nashville, she contacted many record labels for joining as a solo singer, but got rejected by all of them. She had to become the best at what she was doing in order to be selected at such a young age. By the age of 15, she was not only good at singing and the guitar, but had become a great songwriter. She was now hired as the youngest songwriter by ATV Tree Publishing House to write songs for other singers. But in 2005, she joined Big Machine Records in order to create her own album. She met Scott Borchetta, who was just setting up his own record label, Big Machine Records. He took Taylor and brought out her first album, Taylor Swift, in October 2006. Her biggest fear was that no one would ever hear it. However, she became the youngest writer and singer ever to have a number one country music hit, Our Song. Everything that happened to her, she put into her songs. Now listen again. It's easy to be jealous of Taylor Swift. She seems to have it all, and even more. Her four albums have earned her $125 million, but beneath her success lies a life far from perfection. Today, our guest in the studio is Samantha Clarks, whose book about Taylor Swift will help us get inside the mind of the young superstar. Hi, Samantha. It's a pleasure to see you here. Hi, David. Thanks for inviting me. You write in your book that Taylor had an awkward childhood. Why is that? Taylor grew up on a Christmas tree farm in Pennsylvania. As a child, her favorite hobby was to ride horses, and she was encouraged to participate in many horse shows. She loved country music, which nobody else did. At the age of 12, she was taught three chords by a computer repairman on a guitar. With those three simple chords, she wrote her first song. She was lonely at school. In fact, she felt rejected. No one ever invited her to their parties. Taylor wrote it all down in her first song, Lucky You. How did Taylor progress in music? Later, Taylor got a new interest, which would make her one of the recognizable people of her generation. She fancied musical theater, for which she went to Broadway for vocal and acting lessons. She started performing country music at fairs, local music festivals, sporting events, and coffee houses. By then, Swift was sure that she would have her future in music. I know that Taylor's family moved to Nashville when she was 14. Did that change her life in music? Yes, definitely. In search of a break, she was taken by her mother to Nashville, Tennessee. In Nashville, she contacted many record labels for joining as a solo singer, but got rejected by all of them. She had to become the best at what she was doing in order to be selected at such a young age. By the age of 15, she was not only good at singing and the guitar, but had become a great songwriter. She was now hired as the youngest songwriter by ATV Tree Publishing House to write songs for other singers. But in 2005, she joined Big Machine Records in order to create her own album. She met Scott Borchetta, who was just setting up his own record label, Big Machine Records. He took Taylor and brought out her first album, Taylor Swift, in October 2006. Her biggest fear was that no one would ever hear it. However, she became the youngest writer and singer ever to have a number one country music hit, Our Song. 
Everything that happened to her, she put into her songs. This is the end of task three. Now you have three minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet.